Welcome back to Concrete with the Hosses. Um, so we got all the stumps out, and um, now we're gonna start ripping the topsoil up and putting it in a big pile. The project's going too slow that I'm gonna take over now and speed things up. Hoss House Edition. So you can see that we ripped out all the stumps over there. There might just be like one left right over there, but we ripped out most of them. Um, and then we pushed all the topsoil into these big piles right next to us. See, I can go over there. Look. And then we put down some limestone so we can park on it. It is size three. And um, we got everything set up. We just need to. So I'm gonna come over here and show you. So the painted orange line here is two foot wider than the actual house. So they can set the wall panels in there. Hey, good morning, everybody. Thanks for tuning in to Concrete with the Hosses. We are on site at Tommy's house, uh, getting ready to dig the foundation. Uh, it turned into quite the project with my 306 and um, we started out with it making some pretty good progress and then it just was taking way too long uh, so um, we ordered a 316 to be delivered and this machine was incredible the amount of power and we're just not used to that kind of the size of equipment so it was so much fun uh, using this uh, that at the end of the day we just hated to stop working and uh, going from the 316 into the 306 uh, you just felt like you were basically using a shovel <laughs> so as you can see here the the smaller machine dug the top surface real nice. Um, we have a three foot bucket on there, so you move a good bit of dirt and it moves it quickly as long as you can, as long as it's diggable. Uh, but we got down, I'd say about four feet, and we hit some real nice shale that it, it went through pretty good, but at a much slower pace. Um, and this is my first time ever digging a foundation, so it was very exciting, very scary. Uh, but uh, Tommy and EJ and myself a little bit uh, did layout several times, checking our corners, checking our lines. Um, and the way I didn't really uh, know how to go about digging a foundation. I just figured we'd start digging in the middle and dig around and actually uh, EJ Said no how you dig a foundation is you dig your perimeter lines and then you dig out the middle and I just thought that was pretty neat how we just dug you know straight down to footer height and It came out perfect um, Nice, sharp, crisp edges on the walls. Uh, we dug probably a, close to 18 inch to a 24 inch over dig the whole way around consistently. And like I said, it was just so much fun, especially once we got into the bigger machine and really started uh, powering through that that rock and the softer it, like you sometimes you didn't even know you were digging and coming up with a overflowing bucket it just that kind of power so it was just a lot of fun to uh to dive into this project and and get it going so this next couple minutes of footage are are digging out the foundation So we 
kept digging, uh, starting at our corners, uh, digging our straight lines, uh, just getting it down as far as we could. And in a lot of places, uh, we did get it all the way down to footer height. Um, we didn't hit rock, uh, undiggable rock, uh, for quite some time. And uh, you'll see that here in a little bit. Um, even the 306 was able to get it to the very bottom. It just took a little while. Uh, so we just, you know, took our time. Tom took his time digging, uh, jumping from the excavator to the uh, skid loader. Once you got a pile of dirt and pushing it, we stockpiled all the dirt uh, on the back corner of the lot, keeping it for future plans. Uh, and then once the um, 306, or I'm sorry, the 316 showed up, uh, then we really started moving some dirt. Uh, but for right now, just working on those corners, keeping them nice and straight all the way down as long as, uh, long as we could. And just keep checking heights, different spots through the dig. All right, here we are on the foundation. Uh, about five feet down, hit a bunch of rocks, so the 306 wasn't cutting it. So we uh, brought out a little bigger machine here, a 316. We're gonna start chipping away at it with this. So now with the 316 on site, it really didn't take me long to see how much dirt EJ was moving with that. Uh, he has double the reach, a bigger bucket, and just a much more powerful machine. So, within minutes of that showing up, I parked the 306 excavator and just let him dig it. Uh, I was really just in his way. And he had a process of digging around the foundation and I was just really messing it up more than helping. So I didn't mind stepping back and just watching uh, all this take place. Uh, jump in the skid loader and move the dirt. Jump in the high lift and move the dirt. Just w Whatever I could do to help. Uh, and also I went and poured concrete too. So <laughs> that, was, that was what I could do. So just kept checking heights. Kept digging corners digging our straights and then whenever it came time to dig out that middle uh, just went to town pulling the dirt back and and pounding it up on the uh, on the edge of the job site so that's how it went for probably about four four or five evenings uh, after work come home and jump into machinery and uh, go look at a job or two and then jump back in the machinery until dark. And uh, before we knew it, uh, concrete or foundation was dug. left side of the foundation almost down at height uh, just really hit some hard rock where uh, slowed way down the machine was still able to get through it 306 no way could it 
of powered through that uh, rock and shale. Uh, but the 316 uh, handled it pretty well. Just slowed us down. Uh, like I said, it finally got through it all and uh, kept the process moving. So we finished up the foundation with, without any problem and on to the sewer line next. After we got going about halfway through the project, we got a really good routine going. Uh, just using the 316, making a nice stockpile of dirt, and then jumping in the nine the high lift and uh, trucking it across the lot to the other corner where we wanted it stockpiled. It just kept everybody uh, busy, kept the ball rolling nice. Uh, with all that dirt out of his way, uh, EJ could just dig more efficiently and quicker, and just everything went real smooth. Uh, we had a real nice dry spell, uh, no mud on site, not yet anyways, uh, so it really made it nice uh, digging that area too. Um, I've been on job sites where they just turn into a muddy mess, and I think we even have a video named Muddy Mess. <laughs> But um, the, this, this was a really nice clean site, uh, nice dirt, nice shale, a little bit of rock at the bottom that gave us a problem, um, but... Uh So we have a couple more minutes of digging out the foundation around the perimeter down to footer height, uh, digging out the middle, and then we bring in the skid loader uh, down in the hole, uh, helping to push the bottom debris to the corner so EJ can reach it from, with the high lift. It went very well, very quick process at that point, uh, probably only took about two evenings and before we knew it, we were there. Uh, next, we're gonna jump on to the sewer line and go ahead and get ready for the septic tanks coming in. So I'll let this play out for a little bit. You can watch this. It's quite impressive how much dirt he can move in this machine. So I'll talk again in a little bit.
So as we're coming to a close on the foundation, finishing up everything, uh, we started working on the sewer line, uh, but there's a walkout door in the basement and they wanted a concrete footer underneath it. Well, we hit solid rock. Uh, so Tommy brought in our hammer for our skid loader and broke that up real nice and dug that out. Now we didn't get that on footage, uh, just anxious to get it done and ready for the next morning. Uh, and rain is coming, of course. So we uh, don't have any of that on footage. I just wanted to tell you what happens here in the next couple minutes. All right, here we are. We got the uh, foundation all dug out. Doing the superior walls, they want uh, eight inches of limestone base with no concrete footers. So during the walkout area, you need to do a three foot, a couple options, either a three foot concrete footer. That's the one we're gonna go with. Uh, so we had to do a little, little jackhammering to get it out. It's pretty solid stone. We have our uh, six inch piece of pipe in there so we can run the sewer line out uh, getting ready to pour the footer hey doesn't it always rain the night before you pour a footer so uh, Tom pumped it out as best he could still some water in the bottom of the ditch uh, but uh, the concrete brought that right to the top and pushed it off to the side uh, so underway we are onto the sewer line with the sewer line underneath the footer, uh, we have about 110 feet to go to the uh, septic tank. Uh, so we put about 2% drop on that uh, from the bottom of the footer to the top of the tank for 110 feet. 2% drop. And then the last 10 feet of the sewer line run uh, we lessen that to 1%. And I guess that just slows it down so it sort of just drops into the tank rather than picking up a lot of speed and disturbing everything in there. So the system is an Elgin system and there's no yearly or monthly service to these, no inspections. Um, like I said earlier, I don't know a lot about the system, so I, I don't want to misspeak, so I'm not even going to really talk about it other than tell you that is the system. Uh, so we're digging the line right now and getting that out uh, 110 feet with about 2% drop.
with the sewer line completed, uh, now EJ and Tom start digging for the septic tanks. There's two tanks, uh, both 1,250-gallon each. Uh, the first one is a dual compartment to help hold the solids into two different compartments. And then the second tank is a single uh, compartment, and that's how that works. So again, don't know a lot about it other than what uh, Tommy told me the soil specialist re requested. So with the hole just about completed, it is about an 8 foot wide by 16 foot long hole. We're probably close to 12 feet deep. Solid rock down at the bottom. Uh, really stable ground. They are never going to sink. Uh, if, if they sent, settle, if they sink, uh, we got bigger problems in this world than and then Tom does in the septic system. Uh, really nice ground down there. Diggable, but very hard. So that all comes to an end, and the tanks are coming shortly. So right where EJ's piling that dirt, uh, we just take that and knock it down and get a real nice roadway so uh, tomorrow the septic truck can back right up to the edge of the hole and place the tanks in. Uh, we don't need to carry them in with the machine. It, it'll be nice just getting straight off the truck into uh, their home where they're going to go. Uh, so we don't have to move them and risk breaking them. Uh, so that's all coming together real nice. And like I said, the tanks are coming tomorrow and they'll be set right in place. Uh, and hopefully we get it done before it rains again. So just put a couple inches of limestone at the bottom and leveled it out. The next day, the septic tank delivery showed up, uh, looked the site over and agreed just to back up right to the edge of it and place the tanks right in position. Uh, that's how stable this soil is. It, you know, couldn't ask for better foundation material. So the tanks went in uh, pretty much uh, problem free. Um, had to just figure out which way they went, but no big deal. We got it. Uh, so there they are, all in place, uh, ready to be connected and backfilled. And then the only step left on that will be the leach field. Uh, and we're going to do that after the house is constructed. We have that area roped off so nobody can drive in there and keep that nice and protected. Uh, so now we just finish up uh, the foundation area, prepping all that for the walls. So Tom ran his exterior French drain around the perimeter and exited it with the sewer line ditch and backfills is all with limestone. The entire foundation gets filled in with limestone uh, and we actually use limestone chips. This is a superior wall precast system. They'll be delivering the walls shortly and they just go, it doesn't go on a concrete footer which I had a hard time convincing being convinced that this is a good system uh, but it's not my house and it is a really good area for this. If we weren't on such a solid 
uh, rock foundation, I would have put up more of an argument. But it is a really nice wall. And the limestone, compacted limestone, tightened up real nice around the perimeter. So I'm sure it'll be just fine. Uh, otherwise, Tom would not have agreed to do this system. So it goes around the perimeter, setting his limestone for height. Uh, just pushing the stone over the edge and leveling out the middle until it's all ready to go. Again, thanks for tuning in to Concrete with the Hosses. I hope you enjoy these videos. Uh, really excited about building the house, and that's coming quick. Merry Christmas, everybody. Um, we have a broken machine right back there. We, we have to get out here before we have to dig the foundation. Thanks for tuning in to Concrete with the Hosses. New Hoss House. Um, smack, that. smack that, smash that like button and pound the subscribe button. Give me two thumbs up. Make sure to leave a comment.